All right, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm Daniel Wicks, and I'm going to tell you how to extract randomness from extractor-dependent sources. This is joint work with Yevgeny Dodis and Vinod Vaikuntanathan. So randomness is incredibly useful in uh, many areas of computer science. It's useful in algorithm design, distributed computing, and many other areas, and it's absolutely essential for cryptography. And usually when we design crypto systems, we just assume we are in some ideal model where uh, we can sample uniformly random bits on demand whenever the crypto system needs it. But where does this randomness actually come from? And so usually when we think from a theory point of view how to design crypto system, we just imagine we have this gnome who lives inside a computer and every time our crypto system needs a fresh random bit, the gnome uh, tosses a coin and tells us the outcome. So we can sample a bit with uh, the zero or one with probably a half. Um, but uh, if, when I talk to practitioners, they tell me that uh, we don't actually have gnomes living inside computers. So where does randomness really come from? Well, uh, the system samples, uh, uh, measures various properties uh, to derive random bits. Uh, and does so by measuring various properties of the environment, for example, the timing of various system interrupts, uh, that's a very popular source of entropy, or various mouse movements or other uh, signals from input-output devices, uh, or can measure the internal temperature. There's even a company whose shtick is to uh, point uh, video cameras at lava lamps and use uh, the resulting images to derive, uh, to get randomness. So, um, um, uh, to encompass all of these things, we can just imagine that random randomness comes from various sources of nature, from nature, various measure, measurable properties of the environment in which the system is executing. And so here's my abstract picture of nature, which generates randomness. And the problem is that the randomness that nature generates is likely to have entropy. So for example, the timing of interrupts is likely to have some randomness, some have entropy inside it but it's unlikely to be uh, uniform to consist of uniformly random bits. And so the solution to this problem is to use extractors that convert uh, uh, some sources of entropy into uniform randomness. And the goal is to have some function X, which takes as uh, input some sample X that comes from a high entropy source and output some value R, which is just the extractor applied on X, and ideally, this would guarantee that as long as X has entropy, the output R would be a uniformly random bit string. So unfortunately, this is too good to be true, and we know such extractors don't exist in general. So instead, we make do with something called seeded extractors, and uh, essentially, these use an additional component, a random seed, to help extract randomness. So the idea is that there will be one uh, uniformly random seed that uh, uh, can be part of the extractor and it helps us, it acts as an app catalyst and helps us extract randomness from the sample X. And what we would want is that as long as the sample X has entropy and comes from some distribution which is independent of the seed, then the extracted randomness R would be uniformly random even conditioned on the seed S. So the randomness is actually coming from X, not from S, because the randomness, uh, because the output is uniformly random, even given the seed. And the use case, the way we envision using this is that we would choose the seed S once and for all and hard code it into various components. And then we would use it to extract randomness from various samples that come from nature. So here's the, here's the image, we have uh, the seed S which is public and it's hard coded in all kinds of uh, systems and devices. And whenever we get some sample X from nature, uh, we feed it into this extractor and use the output R as the derived randomness that we then use in applications, let's say the cryptography or whatever application we're using randomness for. And the philosophy here is that nature is worst case, but not adversarial. So therefore, even though we don't know the distribution that X, that the sample X comes from, uh, we just assume it as entropy, but we don't know what the exact distribution is. Um, we can assume that this distribution is not uh, as independent of the seed S. Uh, even though S is public, because nature is not really adversarial, it's not trying to somehow choose the worst case X depending on S, we can assume that it's independent. 
And the main point of this talk is that this assumption might be too optimistic in this setting. And the reason is that this extractor is going to be reused over time and that the outputs of the extractor can make their way back into nature and affect nature, changing the distribution of the source of the, of, uh, the samples in the future. So for example, we might use some derived randomness that might make its way, might make its way as an input into some process. And then we use timing interrupts that are related to that process to generate the next sample X. Therefore, the next sample, the distribution of the next sample can depend on randomness extracted in previous times and therefore on the extractor itself, which with the seed hard code. And moreover, just this extractor we're matching that's used by many devices, uh, which all can somehow affect nature. And therefore, it seems reasonable to assume that nature may be affected by the extractor itself. So this brings us to the main motivation for this talk, which is to consider extractor dependent sources. So here we assume that the source, uh, that nature, the source of randomness, can depend on the input output behavior of the extractor with the particular seed S inside it. So we're not assuming that the source's worst case uh, can depend on S in the worst case matter. It's not fully seed dependent, but it's not also fully independent. It can depend on the seed S only through the input output behavior of the extractor with the given seed. In other words, an extractor dependent source is a source that can make Oracle queries to the extractor with the given seed S. And so the main question for this talk is to construct uh, extractors that can extract randomness from all extractor dependent sources. So let me define, uh, we'll call these ED extractors. So let me define what I mean. So here's the security game. We sample a seed S at random, and then we consider uh, some adversarial sampling algorithm, which is sort of, uh, which models the worst case, uh, worst case nature. And the sampler makes Oracle queries to the extractor with the particular seed S uh, hard coded in it, and eventually outputs some sample X. And then we feed X into the extractor with the given seed and extract some randomness R. And we give uh, this extracted randomness R or a uniform value to a distinguisher and the goal of the distinguisher is to tell these apart. The distinguisher also gets the seed S because uh, here we're matching the seed S is public and used by uh, many, many systems. So this is the definition of, uh, extra, uh, of ED extractors. Uh, we have to put some conditions on the sampler. So the first condition is that the output X, the sample that produces, should have some sufficient level, sufficiently high level of entropy. And this is the standard condition for randomness extractors. The additional co condition that we need here is that the sampler also can never have queried the oracle, the extractor, on the uh, sample X that it outputs. And this is a necessary condition. If it can query X, uh, the extractor on X, then it can uh, skew the distribution, can choose an X such that the extracted output, let's say, starts with a zero. Um, so it's a necessary condition. It's also a, a meaningful or, or, or natural condition to make because we're assuming that the sampler somehow uh, uses fresh entropy to produce the sample X and therefore it should not be equal to some value that it previously queried the Oracle on. So somehow the previous cost of the extractor can affect the distribution, but then when it produces a new sample X, some fresh entropy should go into that and therefore it shouldn't get the same sample that it queried previously. So this is the basic definition. We're also going to consider strong strengthening of this definition, which we'll call ED extractors with auxiliary info. And there the sample, the sampler algorithm can also produce some auxiliary info that it gives to a distinguisher as long as the sample X has high enough entropy even conditioned on the auxiliary info. And I wanna mention that in the information theoretic setting where extractors have generally been studied, uh, you could consider a uh, definition with or without auxiliary info. It turns out it doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, any extractor that works without auxiliary info also works with auxiliary info. We're going to see that that's very different here. So there has been some prior work on this problem. There was a work by Coretti et al, which essentially studied a special case of this problem where the extractor is a random oracle. And they showed that a random oracle is a good, good ED extractor, even in the setting with auxiliary info. And so the main point of our work is to study this problem in the standard model without random oracles. So here's the results that we show. 
First of all, we show that unfortunately you cannot achieve this notion information theoretically. This is in contrast to standard seeded extractors, which are information theoretic. Here we'll need computational assumptions. And in fact, we'll show that the sampler itself must be computationally bounded in order to be able to achieve this notion. And uh, uh, the existence of such extractors imply one-way functions. This is even for the weakest notion without auxiliary encoding. Then we show a positive result that actually in the setting without auxiliary info, it's fairly easy to construct these extractors. In fact, any pseudorandom function uh, with sufficient level of security is a good extractor in the setting. But this does not hold in the setting with auxiliary info. We have counterexamples. Uh, the positive result is very strong. It even holds if the distinguisher is computation unbounded. So the output of the extractor is actually statistically close to uniform we get security even for unbounded distinguishers as long as the sampler is computationally bounded. Then we move on to the setting of auxiliary info and there we give three constructions uh, using stronger assumptions. So uh, we have three different approaches based on some intermediate notions, either constrained PRS, shift hiding shiftable functions or lossy slash injective functions. And the last approach gives the most instantiations it can be based on DDH, LW, or decision composite residue acid assumptions. So many, most of the assumptions under which we have public key crypto also give us such uh, extractors. Uh, but here we only get security for computationally bounded distinguishers. Uh, so that's in contrast to the previous uh, setting where we even had it for unbounded ones. And lastly, we give a black box separation. We show that this is actually inherent in the OXINFO setting uh, the distinguisher needs to be computationally bounded, at least if you hope to have a reduction uh, from a standard uh, assumption. Okay, so these are uh, the results. And uh, in this talk, I'm going to tell you just about the first two results. So first, let me show you a bad result, a negative result, which says that you cannot achieve this notion information theoretically. And the idea is very simple. Uh, an unbounded, computation unbounded sampler that has access to this extractor oracle can essentially learn the seed S by making queries to the oracle. It's not fully true, it can't get, it in, it can't get the seed S in full, but it can learn it sufficiently well to be able to predict the output of the extractor on random values. And that's enough for it to choose a random X subject to the extracted output of X starting with a zero. Uh, so it can choose such an X without explicitly querying its oracle on this X. And if it does so, it satisfies the uh, conditions, but it ensures that the extracted output is easily distinguishable from uniform. So this shows you cannot have inf uh, do this information theoretically. Now let me show you the positive results, which is that in the setting without auxiliary info, uh, it's very easy to construct these extractors and a pseudorandom function is a good uh, uh, extractor in the setting. So our construction is just that the extractor of, uh, with the seed S is a good PRF where we think of the seed as the seed to the PRF. So uh, actually we hear uh, this result holds if the security of the PRF is sufficiently strong, we'll need the security to be exponential in the output size. But for now, let's just consider the setting of a one bit output. And the main difficulty here is how do we prove security? Uh, how do we get a reduction uh, that somehow uses an adversary against this extractor to break the PRF security? When here the distinguisher gets the seed of the PRF. And obviously we can't argue security of a PRF when the seed is given out. Moreover, here we want to even argue secure against a computational unbounded distinguisher and therefore the reduction cannot from the distinguisher at all. So we're not going to, we're going to ignore the uh, distinguisher completely. We're just going to use the fact that the extracted output is statistically far from uniform, even given the seed. And what that means, uh, that actually translates into that the collision probability of R given S is larger than it should be. For example, if R is just one bit, uh, if I sample the same bit twice for the same S, I'm more likely to get the same bit. Uh, uh, so R is most, more likely to collide than it would if I cho chose two uniformly random and independent bits. And we're going to use that to get a reduction. The reduction is very simple given some Oracle O, which is either PRF or a truly random function. It's just going to run the sampler twice to get two values, x and x prime, it's also going to call the oracle one more on these values to get r and r prime. 
and it will output one if r prime is equal to r. And because uh, essentially using the fact that the extract output is statistically far, we can analyze the success probability of this reduction and show that it outputs one with higher probability if, uh, uh, at the, if the oracle is a pseudorandom function than if the oracle were a truly random function. And I want to note that this idea, uh, idea fails really badly in the setting with auxiliary info. And the reason is that if you take two runs of the sampler, then they will unlikely, they're unlikely to give you the same auxiliary info and therefore you cannot, uh, you cannot somehow compare these two runs. And in fact, not only does the proof idea fail, the result is false. We have count examples where, PR, where uh, we can construct PRFs that are not good extractors in the setting with auxiliary info. So uh, in that setting, we have to work harder and uh, actually a large part of the paper is uh, looking into these constructions in the setting with auxiliary info, but uh, I don't have time to get uh, into those. So let me just conclude. Uh, we saw definitions and constructions of these types of extractors in the setting with and without auxiliary info. And uh, probably the main open question left by this work is if we can construct these types of extractors in the setting with auxiliary info from, uh, the, from just one-way functions uh, without re relying on stronger assumptions that imply public key cryptography. All of our current constructions uh, are based on things like DDH and LWE, uh, so stronger assumptions uh, in cryptomania. And it's, we don't know whether we can construct them from one-way functions alone. And the other open question is, I think this is a very interesting primitive. Can you come up with other applications and connections uh, between this new type of extractors that we defined here and other problems uh, in cryptography. All right, well, thank you very much uh, for listening.